Yeah, I put my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more it's times. Five blokes outside my front door. Can you come and help One me? hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Me and Spencer Oliver are back from Saudi Arabia. We're in London, uh, ahead of a, a different type of thing for, for us. KSI is fighting two guys on Saturday night. What do you make of that, Spencer? Yeah, well, listen, like, I'm sort of a fan of YouTube boxing, really. Like, It goes back to, you know, that I was involved in promoting the first fight with KSI versus Joe Weller. That was a show that I put on. He was involved in that? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I was, a, I was one of the promoters of that show, and I also promoted KSI versus... Logan Paul won and Deji versus Jake Paul. That was a show that we put on in Manchester where I brought Michael Buffer over. So I was effectively the founder of YouTube Boxing. Stuart Jones, who's the agent of the Sidemen, come to me with the idea that the KSI wanted to box, wanted to get into boxing and he, he approached me, myself and Jake Wood, AKA Max Branning. We had the meeting, believe it or not, at the East Enders studio in the Queen Vic, and that's where the deal was done to put on this show. That's that's the story, and that's how YouTube boxing originally started. So I'll, I'm, I'm friends with JJ, KSI, um, so I'm happy to be involved with him doing what he's doing. I think that Jake Paul himself, now the other YouTuber, and has sort of coming into his own now. He's starting to get recognised as a boxer, and I think KSI fans is a little bit of that as well. I mean, you've got to respect him for taking two fights in one night. It's a dangerous one, because Schwarms, who has no real boxing experience will come out swinging like mad so that can always be dangerous and Panida or Panada he's um you know he's a Mexican guy he's tough so as soon as you say Mexican you go well the kid can tough he must be tough he can fight he's got a good he's got an extensive amateur boxing career and he's a professional boxer as well so respect to KSI mate he likes to do things his own way do things slightly different and he's definitely doing that well, I said at the start, it's a bit of a different world for you, for both of us. It's definitely not for you then, because you're right in the centre of it. Absolutely, I totally understand it. Now, I know, I like to say, we sort of like, yeah, we we was there at the start of it all. Um, and I'm still, that's what I said to KSI when I just interviewed him for Talk Sport. I just had done this interview and I said, mate, it's like I've been on this journey with you. I've been involved in all these fights with you. I know he went over and done the second fight with Eddie Hearn over in the States and whatnot, but... I sort of like, yeah, we, we was there at the beginning, yeah, to Copper Box and, and Manchester Arena. So we've sort of like, yeah, I've been on this journey with him, which is, which is quite nice, actually, because it's nice to see him now going into the, going into the ring again on, on Saturday night. Definitely, and I think uh, if he comes through both fights, that Jake Paul fight will happen at Wembley next year. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just the Jake, fight that will happen, uh, Jake Paul fight that will happen. I don't think that that will happen before... A fight with KSI and Tommy Fury. That was a fight that KSI was talking about. Tommy Fury. I'm giving you some exclusives here, bro. KSI said to me in the interview that that's the fight that he wants after this fight on Saturday night. He said Tommy Fury is a fight that I fancy. So there you go. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's just go back to Saudi Arabia. Um, I don't know if you've watched the fight back, Spencer. Have you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've watched the fight back. What are your reflections compared to watching it live to watching it back on the television? I, uh, pretty similar, actually. I, after nine rounds, I had the fight pretty even. And do you know what? You get some people, like, it's, it, it's a shocker, really, that people are going to be, how can you have the fights after nine, uh, uh, even after nine rounds? It's either 5 4 one way or the other. I go, well, what about if you have one round even? It's quite simple. It's not, it's not rocket science. So after nine rounds, like most people at ringside, I had the fight even or one round or another one way or the other but I had the fight even and the last three rounds I gave to Alexander Usyk and the reason that happened was I spoke to Anthony Joshua about this and he said he blew a gasket he went for it in the ninth round he rolled the dice and he went for it he said like I felt like I was hurting him to the body I was breaking him down and I, and I went for it you can't give the geezer respect he don't get enough respect Joshua for what he's achieved world silver medalist Olympic gold medalist two time world heavyweight champion his last 12 fights have been in world heavyweight title fights. He doesn't get the respect he deserves, you know, and, um, you know, what happened after the fight happened, that, that sort of overshadowed the fight a little bit, but I'd done an interview with him um, straight after, actually. I didn't interview him. I had, a, I, had a, I had a chat with him straight after, which a lot of people, again, just pick up that little clip and go, well, but they didn't see what was going on before that. Like, the guy, you know, I was saying to him, you, you went out on your shield, mate. You know, you give it a go. After nine rounds, you was holding... Like, in the early rounds, he was out boxing the best boxer in the world. And, and, and I stand by that. And after nine rounds, he was the fight was even. I stand by that. You know, yes, Alexander Usyk won the fight, 115-112. 
I think I had it. I think I had it 115, 112, 116, 113, whatever it was. But I had him winning by three rounds. Fair enough, the right guy won. Don't say that Joshua weren't in the fighters at, at stages there because he was. Do you truly believe he was out boxing on Alexander Usyk? Yeah. Well, only in the early rounds. Like in the early rounds, Joshua had a game plan, and Usyk is a great fighter at figuring fighters out. Joshua had come there, and he was he was boxing to a stra he was boxing to a game plan, and it was working for him. You know, and as the fight started unfolding, Joshua had to start using his strength more because Usyk obviously figured it out. But Usyk was struggling in the first couple of rounds to get to grips with a different type of anti Joshua. You can't say it weren't a new improved anti Joshua because it was. You know, I think that you know. Working under his new team um, with Robert Garcia and that, I think it worked really well. I think that you saw different things to Joshua. You saw that he added he added stuff to his arsenal. So yeah, I was impressed with it, mate. Overall, I was proud of him. I thought he boxed really well. You mentioned the video that went viral, actually, of you yeah. talking to Anthony straight after the fight, well, at the post-fight press conference. Um, I guess the, the main thing that people were saying, is that really what Anthony needs to hear? Yeah, absolutely. So can you respond to that? Absolutely, I want to respond to that, actually, because, yeah, it was what you needed to hear. I was on the ground, would be, right? as was you. We was there, right? And we saw what, what happened after the fight and Joshua's stupid thing that he'd done after the fight with show, throwing the belts out and everything else. He recognised that he'd done wrong there and he recognised that, oh, shit, I might be in a little bit of trouble for this. This is going to backfire on me. So when he got his head back together and he come in the press conference, you saw as well, Umar, you was there. He broke down emotionally. He broke down. And I was like, I went then. I know him as a mate. I've known him since he was 17 years of age. I've known him since he started boxing. So he's looking around the room. He's got half his eyes filled up with water and, I'm, and he's looking at me and he's giving me like five, ten minute stares. And I'm thinking, I, yeah, he was looking at me just to say like, do you know when someone looks at you and you think, I want to give this geezer a little bit of support here because he was getting done with questions and everything else. He recognised he'd done wrong. So that was why when I got, I stood up and got the speech that I'd done the speech that I was saying to him, mate, you showed the heart of a lion. You was pushing the, you know, put Usyk all the way. He ran away with it at the end, but you should be proud of yourself and you will be three-time world champion. I stand by that as well. But then after that, when we went out, I went, mate, you was fucking pushing him. You was outboxing the best boxer in the world at stages of that fight early on. Like, and then you used your brute strength. The fight was close after nine rounds. So I was just lending the geezer like anyone, anyone that's human would have done the same as me. If it was your mate and you seen him sitting up there, you would have done the same thing. He needed supporting then. And, and that was what I was doing. I wasn't telling lies. The fight was even after 10, going into the 10th round on my scorecard. And as, as it happens, the judges scorecards as well. So, do you know what I mean? All the people that are sitting at home in their armchairs with it going, oh, Joshua lose, only winning one round. Well, that's why you're in your armchair, mate. At the bottom line of it, you know what I mean? Like the judges had it similar to like myself, and, and I think it, most of the people I've spoke to as well, it was pretty even fight up until eight or nine rounds, and Usyk took over. I guess the, the concern that people have is behind the scenes when this is, isn't filmed, and for example, after the first fight where Joshua was beaten quite handily by yeah. Usyk, that people perhaps, and this goes to all camps, whether yeah. it's you know Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Canelo, that the people around them that are mates with them perhaps don't tell them the truth and tell absolutely. it real. Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally understand that. But Joshua, at that stage, it was not that like I was telling him a lie. He was in the fight. And that's what I don't understand with people. I'm going, what people do is they pick words out of interviews or whatever and then they just jump on it. I go, listen to the whole interview. I was saying... After going into, going into the 10th round, not after the 10th round, going into the 10th round, the fight was all level. I said, you boxed out your skin. Tell me that that weren't one of the best performances you've seen from Anthony Joshua. Alexander Usyk proved that he is a class act. But actually, from a boxing point of view, I thought that was one of the best performances I've seen from Joshua. Last one, your reaction to talks being held for Fury v Usyk um, and a projected date of December 17th in yeah. Saudi Arabia for that fight. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that. You know, I think that we want to get that undisputed fight. And, um, you know, we, we want to see Tyson Fury back in the ring. He's a sheer entertainer. And let's hope it happens. Yeah, December the 17th. My prediction is December the 17th, out in the Middle East. Probably go back to Saudi again. Can't get the venues here. Um, obviously, because it's winter time, stadiums, that's a stadium fight. So I've, I see it going out in Saudi, if I'm totally honest, mate. I really do. But I think the fight happens. Fury's a fighting man. We need to see him back in the ring. I believe there's still a couple of fights left in him. And um, yeah, he's a, he plays a massive part in this ever-moving heavyweight division. And he won for Tyson Fury v Alexander Rusic December 17th and then England in the World Cup final the day after. How good would that be? That would be like absolutely insane, wouldn't it? That would be nuts, man. That would be like brilliant. Spencer Oliver on another boat. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> you see me on my little boat out there? Yeah, yeah mate, I, I know. It was crazy. Saudi was a, an unbelievable experience, you know. It had so many dramas, so many ups, so many downs, even down to the fight, what happened after the fight. But what a way to finish it, mate, on a boat. Did you see that? Giving it large. Um, yeah, it was fun, man. It was really good. Well, you deserve it. You talk sport, boys. Work very hard behind the scenes. Uh, Spencer, thank you for your time. We'll see you soon, all right? Cheers, bro. Yeah, Cheers. My dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. There's five blokes outside my front door. Can you come and help One me? hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Day. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.